Hello and welcome back and for today's video I've got a really exciting effect for you where you can just basically use any other object to break things in Blender and it can really really do a lot with very minimal amount of nodes and it's not that complicated to make it so let's get right into it all right so we're gonna start with a new blender file here and i'm using blender 4.0 so i'm gonna go to geometry nodes tab click on new and we've got a new geometry node set up here we're going to do shift a and add a subdivide mesh node here let's go ahead and increase the subdivisions to five and i am going to click on this and just enable wireframe visibility for it all right so right after subdivide mesh i can simply add a mesh to points node and let's plug this in here and i'm going to use vertices to actually create my points once we have points let's add instance on points node and for instances i'm going to use cubes again there are a lot of cubes which are overlapping each other and i can i mean i can go ahead and change the size of them and uh, try and make it fit but to be honest it doesn't really work that precisely i don't and i don't want to keep changing the size every time i change the subdivisions right so one dynamic way to be able to achieve this is that there is a node called edge points or sorry edge vertices this node basically does a job of finding the indexes of the vertices which are connected through an edge and also it also gives us the position of those vertices how we can use this is that we can take the position of the first vertices and find the distance between both of them theoretically the way it works is that every face on the cube should just be joined by one vertice and the difference or the distance between those vertices would be the size of the face i have this value i can use this value to define the scale of my instances as soon as i plug this in everything disappears and there is a big reason behind that so i'm gonna do a control shift click and i get this viewer node right after my subdivision subdivide mesh node and i can take this and look at the distance value in here right and if i look at it um, i can see that there is a value that is getting created but if i go back and check it right after mesh to points there is nothing if even if i go into points the viewer node becomes zero which doesn't make sense right and the reason behind that is that the value that is getting created here as soon as we convert those uh, vertices into points we lose those values so we have to find a way to store that value and then reuse it right after we have created our instances but one way to do that is to use a store name attribute node and i'm going to plug this in here and since this is a value between two edges i'm going to switch it to edge and let's take this distance value plug it into the value and we're going to name it size because it's the size of the faces let's come back here and in our scale we can just use named attribute and let's bring in size and let's plug this in here and let's go back and check and now we have our faces again the good thing about this is that if i reduce the number of subdivisions it will automatically resize the instances to match the size of the faces now that we have a lot of cubes instead of vertices we can just use a simulation zone to ideally displace them right so let's plug this in here and uh, one way to displace it is set position now and we are going to use a noise texture to actually displace that and let's use the color section of the noise texture as soon as i plug this in everything gets displaced together and that's not what i want and plus i also need to correct uh, for the error uh, that happens whenever you use a noise texture and uh, I'm going to subtract it by 0 0.5 and it just makes sure that it's distributing it evenly. We need to find a way to somehow only displace the cubes that are close to a certain object. So first of all, let's create an object. So I'm going to create a UV sphere. Let's bring in, bring the UV sphere right out here. I'm going to click on my cube again. And let's bring this UV sphere into our node setup. And let's change it to relative because we need to make sure that it's always taking the real time position of the spheres. Let's bring in a geometry proximity node. Let's say if the distance is less than 0 0.5, I want you to displace it. 
let's plug this in and only the cubes that are closer to the sphere and have a distance of less than five are getting distributed so let's hit the space button to play the simulation and let's see what's happening now there is one big problem that you see right uh, is that it's displacing the cube but the cube stops as soon as it is away or as soon as the distance becomes more than 0 0.5 and we need to figure out a way to solve that somehow what i ideally would want to happen is that once a cube is displaced it should just go away from the original position and keep going away because that's how it looks a little bit more natural than uh, than what we are seeing right now so let's reset the simulation let's go back here now one way i can do that is that i could say that if the cube is less than 0 0.5 with uh, respect to the sphere i want it to be displaced but then I also want it to be displaced when the distance between them or between the original uh, cube or original object is more than 0 0.1, then you you keep the effect intact, right? You just don't stop it. One way to do that is uh, we can use the proximity node on the original mesh and uh, let's plug this distance here. We'll change it to 0 0.1 and we'll change this to greater than. And one way to combine both of these is with an or node so i can just take this and press or and that's what i get and let's plug this in and let's plug this into the selection now let's go back and uh, if i see uh, the cubes the cubes are now displaced continuously now let's refine the effect a little bit more along with getting displaced by the noise texture what i also want it to be moving away from the center of this object continuously and one way we can do that is by using the position node we can add the position into the noise and then scale it down a little bit so let's scale it down to 0 0.1 or, and we can we can again modify that later on let's also scale down the overall effect a little bit too so about 0 0.2 I'm also gonna reduce the noise to one and let's change it from 3d to 4d and plug it into the second output of the scene time node now let's go back and let's try the simulation again and this time it is getting distributed more effectively and it looks like a destruction effect and uh, one last thing that i would want to do in this is that if you see when the cubes are getting distributed they are all in the same rotation let's randomly rotate these cubes as well and since since these cubes are instances we can just use rotate instances here and that should pretty much do the trick so i need to say that rotate these instances randomly so i'm going to use a random value node here and let's use a value called tau which is uh, 360 degrees of rotation in uh, in terms of radians let's go back here and if you see now everything's getting rotated and that's not what i want so i already created a value to limit that and i'm going to use that again into rotate instances and only the instances which qualifies uh, to be dis distributed are now getting um, affected with the rotation as well so let's go back and let's try it again and i'm going to increase the simulation to about 600 frames and let's play it let's see all right i think that's about it now currently it will work for every straight objects like cubes or planes etc but it might not work on a lot of complex objects i'm still trying to figure it out but i i still hope you learned something new today and you like this effect if you did please like share and subscribe and i'm gonna see you in the next one